Hi everyone, welcome back to Casual Watch Reviews. Well, very kindly got Mike France joining us again. Mike, thanks thanks for joining us. It's always a pleasure, Sam. Thank you for the invitation. Looking forward to it. Last time you were on, we talked all about the newly released 12 at the time. I think I got in early because there was a lot of column inches spent about the 12 after after our interview. It definitely captured people's uh, attention. So how how's the sales gone? Uh, yeah, you did get the scoop, um, but fully deserved, actually, I think. Um, but uh, sometimes I, I, I think people must get sick of me sort of going, oh, yeah, it's much better than uh, we thought, but it, it was much better than we anticipated. I'm getting a bit sick of some of our guys under forecasting, but that's a wholly different story. It, it did take us by surprise. Before uh, we launched it, we did increase our, our, our view of uh, how big it might be, largely on the back of conversations with people like yourself, because the reaction, the response we were getting from people was very, very, very strong. And it was from a wide base of people, not just um, watch aficionados like yourself, but, uh, you know, uh, including people like my wife. Uh, so, um, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a very sort of um, broad based, strong response. Um, so we, we had increased the, uh, the forecast, but it pummeled that to the point that we still out of stock of the titanium, which is coming back in October. We sold out of that very, very quickly, uh, but it's still, people are buying it on pre-order in great numbers. It's been a really, really successful launch and coming on the back of uh, the Belcanto from last year and then through into this year. It's one of, it's, it's been, those two together have been, I think it's fair to say very transformational for our business. It has taken us to a completely different level. And it, both of those watches have had a commensurate impact on other watches. We're trying desperately to keep up with demand on things like the Trident 300. Honestly, the Trident 300 has just gone to the moon, as has the moon glow itself, as has the, uh, particularly the Sealander GMT, and particularly actually in the United States. I mean, the, the Sealander GMT in the US is, it's, it's crazy. We knew we had some good law, you know, we knew both of these watches were good and we, you always want them to do well, but they have been transformational and we are operating at a completely different level now. You alluded to it there, the titanium then was the best seller, was it? It, it was a uh, launch and it sold out. They were pretty equal on units, but of course the titanium was a bit more expensive and we didn't, because it was more expensive, we didn't um, buy in as deeply to the titanium as we did the steel. As it turns out in units, they're probably going to be pretty equal. They're also, it's a chronometer, so there's a slight delay. It takes longer to get the movements because they all have to go to the cost to be certified, etc. And you always lose a few. So it's the lead time on the on the TI is, is is a bit longer because of that, but but nevertheless, um, you know, we we had no chance of keeping in stock for very long. It was I think it it sold out in a week, yeah, wow, which was which was crazy. But it's back in, and as I say, people are still ordering it in great quantities, even though it's um, it's been on a pre order through to end of October, early November. Um, so it's um, it's been. Exceptional. Well, we're back today to talk about, you dropped sort of heavy hints to it when you launched the 12 and yeah. it's the new version, which is the slightly smaller 36 size and very kindly managed to get a review copy before this. So there'll be plenty of footage spliced in as we'll do a review interview. I got the, the blue dial version. It visually and also feel wise is a much more refined size than 36. There was this one planned all along. It was, it should be said. I mean, we, we knew early days that we thought the, the 12 was going to be big. And as I've s discussed with you before, Sam, you know, um, when you go into additional sizes of watches, it's largely driven by the, the volumes that um, your your core size or core sizes are going to deliver for you. And we, we, we felt the 40 millimeter was going to be really, really substantial, whatever. Therefore, we planned very early on, almost in tandem, a 36 millimeter. And, you know, to some extent, we think 36 is the new 40. People will see it in the campaign that we're launching alongside it. This is a watch for every wrist and it plays to the agenda agenda we're getting a, an awful lot of women buying the 12 40 millimeter we expect an awful lot of women and an awful lot of smaller wristed males to be buying the 36 mil that's to some extent that mix is uh, reflected in um, in the colors that we're we're bringing out uh, certainly at launch hopefully we'll be adding further colors in time but there's no question that we we do actually think that 36 is um is 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 potentially a bit of a new sweet spot. We've uh, had uh, surprisingly big success on the thirty six millimeter Sealander. That further encourages us to go with the thirty six millimeter with the twelve. And I think the twelve 
has even broader appeal in many ways than the, uh, it's more of a jewelry item. So it plays a little more to the women's market. People forget, don't they? We all forget. I mean, it's, it's relatively recent that larger watches have become de rigueur. If you go back to the original Rolex Datejust, it was a 36 mil. I do think that these things are as much to do with fashion and fad, how people perceive the size of a watch as much as the watch itself. The, the size of watches has been coming down gently. 38 now is a huge size for us, whereas 40 to 42 was, was often the sweet spot for us. We're now finding that sweet spot is probably now... 40 and below, and you could argue 37, 38, and we think 36 is is a really cool size now. I've still got a bit of convincing about 36, but I did, my wife did try this on, and she's got very small wrists. She's probably got like maybe four inch wrists. She's got extremely small wrists. My goodness, wrists. they are small, yeah. So she tried it on and it looks great. So there is some differences, isn't it? It's not just that it's a, sh- a shrunken down no, version no, of the no. port. We, we've, re- we've reproportioned it because um, if you just shrink it, it, it doesn't quite work or it, not to our eyes anyway. So Will Brackfield, very early on when we were talking about it, he realized that things like the, um, the indexes needed to be slightly slimmer disproportionately to the 40. People will notice we've um, taken the the date window for out of the 36 that'll please some people to the rafters and i'll get criticized for other by others that we haven't got a date you cannot win on on dates but the reason we took it out was because it just it would have meant that the baton at six would have had to have vanished altogether we found that to be an inappropriate aesthetic change uh, it was as driven as much by aesthetics as any you about whether you should have a date window or not a date window. And so those little touches are not obvious, but they're there and they make the the whole entity look very balanced, I think. But the other thing is that the 36 in this this version loses the bracelet as well. We've just got it on this rubber strap, which is actually a triumph, this rubber strap, but that was that that was a conscious choice as well was it to make it wear better was it have just having it on the rubber or no it's no it's it's also available on the bracelet okay so i did that bit out then <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think they i think they've just sent you the rubber strap version but no it's 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 similarly on exactly on the the integrated bracelet which has just been trimmed accordingly and it looks fantastic on the uh, on the bracelet we're doing this review before the actual official press release so the the photo that i got they were all rub- rubber that's oh yeah yeah, so there we go. It looks uh, it looks the biz. This rubber strap is is amazing, isn't it? The pattern on the back makes it wear really well. It is a beautiful rubber strap, and and we think actually the mix of sales on the thirty six on rubber strap will be higher than it was on the forty, partly because the colour matched in the main to the dial. There's a lot of bundling going on as well. People are buying the bracelet and a rubber strap. Uh, which would I, I would encourage more people to do. I mean, not just because it's more money in our till, but actually because of the quick release system, you've got two watches for the sake of a very small differential and they are very different in appearance. On the 40, that's when I reviewed it. I was lucky enough to get it on the bracelet, which it suits the watch. They are con- two completely different looks after yeah. seeing it on the rubber as well. So yeah, I would say buy it on the bracelet and then maybe add the rubber in. Add, add the rubber strap. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. The release colours are very similar to the way the 12 was released. With a couple of subtle differences, the, the Glacier Blue, not your favourite colour, work to be done, is uh, is a launch colour. Um, we think that will be the the, num- uh, be the number two colour. The darker blue that you have, and which we call Nordic Blue, is was also in the 40. The new interpretation of the Arctic White, which I think we're calling Al- Al- Alter White, actually is subtly different in that it has rose gold indexes and hands. And so it's got that silvery white dial, and that, that is a new combination for us. But the, the surprise element um, is a sort of a, um, a mint green that we're calling Frosted Lichen. From early responses, we think Frosted Lichen is going to be the number one colour. And it's as much men, men as women. I'm definitely into a Frosted Lichen myself. But we think that's going to surprise some people. So th- probably the best two colours we think will be the frosted lichen and the one you don't like. <laughs> yeah, and, and the 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 frosted the frosted lichen one definitely caught my eye as well because I do have a mint green Rolex date just. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing how that green, and I'm sure it does on your pattern dial, is how the green changes in the light quite a bit. It shimmers, yeah, it shimmers. 
Right. So maybe maybe the uh, mint green is the new the new Tiffany blue. Or <laughs> there you go. I think I think you could be right. I think you could be right. Let's hope so. Anyway, um, but yeah. They, so uh, we're very hopeful for uh, for that. And uh, uh, but you know they all they all should be um, reasonable. But uh, that's uh, that's my tip for the top. So the the launch price on the the bracelet is going to be thousand and fifty pounds. Yeah, twelve twenty five dollars. On the uh, on the rubber strap, it's eight fifty nine nine five. So you come in below thousand dollars on the rubber strap, and uh, is a two hundred thirty dollar supplement for the uh, for the integrated bracelet. Well, I hope they do sell out <laughs> at one level, but uh, I hope it's not because uh, our forecasting was so wrong. But uh, um, we've got uh, we've we've got uh, follow on deliveries coming in very quickly after the launch, so we should be in stock uh, for a for a, a little while at least. Awesome. So I'll leave all of the links in the description down below. Head over there to check out the new 12, 36 millimeters.